When we first moved into Miremi, um, we went in there with a, a clean slate, so to speak. There was nothing very specific that we needed to focus on. And very quickly we worked out that there was a, a very interesting story developing with these lions. Within a few months of being there, six lionesses that made up part of the Kakanika pride, five of those six gave birth and had cubs in dens. So it was an unbelievable opportunity for us to to follow a full cycle in the lives of, of this particular pride. With the pride expanding so quickly, it kept the pride very, very localised and made them quite easy to follow and, and keep tabs on. A lot of interaction between the cubs and the, and the adults, the lionesses, even with the adult males. And it just allowed us to really get to know the pride and become very close to that pride. The amount of time that we spent with them, um, you could see that they definitely started getting used to us within several months. It didn't take long before the pride almost completely accepted us and would actually choose to lie in the shade of our vehicle around us uh, to get out of the sun. They became very relaxed with us. We spent extended periods in the field with these lions and it was quite easy to do because we spent a lot of time being completely entertained by these young, young cubs growing and, and learning about life, uh, what it's like to be a lion. Like uh, the pride having to cross a little piece of water. Uh, cubs really not very sure-footed, not quite sure about the water. And it's just very interesting learning, um, them learning to get around in the environment. Lions are incredibly social animals. The hierarchy within the pride is, a, is an important part of their structure. And watching the cubs sort of fumble their way through that and work out, you know, the hierarchy within the pride, what lionesses you shouldn't be spending too much time with, um, or being too close to what males tolerated a bit of games and fun. It was just very, very interesting growing with those cubs, seeing those little personalities maturing and uh, getting to identify with them quite personally. It was a very, very interesting time, very interesting experience. Some of the exciting times that we, that we had with these cubs in their learning process was in conflicts with buffalo, when the pride has managed to stalk and, and access the buffalo. You would often see quite comical interactions where cubs would break cover quicker than the adults uh, giving themselves away and giving the, the buffalo the advantage and the entire herd would turn and they would chase the cubs all over the park. You could just see the lionesses getting very, very frustrated with this uh, with these adolescents trying to, trying to be involved in the hunts, trying to learn how to hunt buffalo. With this lion pride particularly, the, the numbers growing so quickly over such a short space of time, the pride almost got locked into this dynamic with the buffalo. No other prey species provided enough uh, sustenance to feed the entire pride. 2008 was a it was a very, very dry year for us. Very unusual weather patterns. And what ended up happening was the buffalo that normally were residents in that area for months on end started having to leave that area and heading north to wetter areas because there was no vegetation where they were. And as a result, the Kukanika pride used to follow these buffalo until they left their territory. And then they would do these huge insurgents through the area trying to find others and very often when they didn't find those buffalo, they would have to then break out of their area and break into another pride's territory in order to access the buffalo. Regularly on those occasions when we followed the pride out, the arrival of a, of a big herd of buffalo into a new pride territory, the buffalo draw in the resident pride from that area. And this caused quite a lot of conflicts. Our pride would be following them, the other pride from the new area would be coming in to access them, 
and very often we had conflict between the two prides, literally over a herd of buffalo. When this does happen, the buffalo become secondary in the, in the lion's mind, and the sort of territorial conflict and the fight is, is foremost. They will almost ignore them completely and they will go for confrontation and there will be a chase or a fight just to secure territory before securing the food source. We lost 40%, 50% of our cubs during a three month period. And it was solely due to the fact that they were going out into areas that they became vulnerable. And it's very, very difficult for a pride if they don't stand and fight. The adults will run away from the conflict, move back into their territory, and very often cubs would be left behind. What happened to them, I'm not exactly sure, but that's where most of the conflict happened. In the beginning of November 2010, um, a coalition of two quite young but very strong male lions moved into the Kakanika Pride's territory. Apparently there has been a conflict and one of our dominant males has, has disappeared. They haven't seen him for, for a month or so and the state of the remaining lion being quite weak and, and injured uh, suggests that this new coalition is, is starting to take over that pride. That's going to put the existing cubs under quite a lot of pressure. Um, either they must break away and become nomadic, form their own little pride, or the possibility is they'll be killed. Very few people get the opportunity to spend such extended time with the prize of lions and getting to know them personally and individually, seeing the different characters and, and uh, it is an incredible experience. I think the, the biggest regret I think I'll always have is that we did three years out of the four years of living with that pride, almost an entire cycle of a generation and the biggest regret is that we were not there to see that to the end. It has changed my perspective towards lions quite a lot. What I've realized is here is an ideal situation where it's in a national park, it's protected, it's an area that's never been hunted before, that the lions in those conditions, supposedly ideal conditions, have such a low success rate from their offspring. They're down to 30%, if not less than 30% success rate so far. If you think of that in, as a whole, lions really have a hard life. The whole social fa fabric is quite unforgiving and they're under quite a lot of pressure, just naturally. And to think that there are probably 30,000 wild lions left in the world people should be more aware of how hard it is for them and really make an effort to try and conserve more areas for lions. Lions, in my opinion, should be Appendix A, they should be protected.